name is Martin Wishart and I'm uh, head chef proprietor at uh, Martin Wishart Loch Lomond here in Cameron House in Scotland. Uh, my restaurant I opened here in November 1988. Uh, it was a six month negotiation with De Vere Hotels. Uh, well, it was important for me to extend my business because uh, you know, I, I, I've been in my Leith restaurant now for 12 years and I purposely waited a good half dozen years uh, before I wanted to expand. And I felt that opening a cookery school was a good way to showcase what we do as, as a group, as an as a individual standalone restaurant. To extend into Cameron House was a, a careful decision, simply because of the, the time, time travel between the two properties. Um, but after six months of uh, thinking about it and then six months of deciding the contract, it, it was, um, you know, it, it's been beneficial to do that. Sure, the dish I'm going to cook for you today, it's uh, currently on my menu, so we are in the late spring, early summer menu. It's roast fillet turbot. Uh, the turbot's from Scrabster. It's going to be served with some snails. The snails I buy from Devon. Uh, the supplier that I use is someone that's been regularly uh, used for the menu for the past two years. Um, the dish is going to also have uh, some morel mushrooms cooked in an emulsion finished with some fevs and peas mm -hmm. and uh, dishes finished with some shaved mimlet cheese from the northeast of France in the town of Lille. <coughs> this turbot I have here is around a three kilo weight which is the ideal weight for this dish. You can see by its appearance that this is from a, an area of uh, the seabed which is quite sandy. When I'm filleting fish is I prefer a bladed knife that's quite fairly flexible. Well first of all we take the top two fillets off now the turbot's got a natural line straight down, which is going to take you onto the top of the backbone here. Okay. I'm going to go first to the left, looking out from my direction, down to the tail. Now, clean sweeps. It's not too much effort needed here, yeah? Let the knife do the work. What I'm going to be using for this dish is just purely the fillet here. Moving on to the snails now. Before they sent to me, they've been purged for a week. I cleaned them, basically starved. So they're clean inside. So what I need to do is take them out of the shell. And the best way and easiest way to do that is to blanch them. Pan of boiling water. So I'm going to put them into the pan. A quick blanch, like you do with a langoustine or lobster, if you want to remove it from the shell. Into the foot of the snail with a cocktail stick and out it comes. Okay. This is its intestine here. You can see this light grey, soft, almost, you can see how it's been curled up inside its shell. You just pull that away. This discard, this is the good bit. The cooking of the snails, uh, basically I need to take some just water the snails are quite a delicate taste to them, so add things that are going to give and not over enhance the flavour of the snail. A little bit of thyme, mirepoix, just the classic celery, onion and carrot, a little garlic as well, season it. White wine vinegar, five times the amount of white wine. Onto the stove. Guys, have a taste. You know, it's not salty, I can taste the vinegar, I can taste the wine and when I taste it again in half an hour, I'll taste the, the uh, thyme and the garlic too. After I've filleted the turret, I basically just give it a, a light wash. If it does, if it looks very fresh and the flesh itself feels very firm, leave it in the fridge, cling filmed for a couple of days and let it soften up. Treat it like a piece of meat. Generally I just use table salt for seasoning my fish and meat. It's about a finger thickness. You can already see that it's starting to colour slightly here. Around three minutes. I'm going to flip it over, put a nice colour on the top, back into the oven. Unsalted butter into the pan. A few bits of broken cloves of garlic and a few leaves of thyme. A minute on the stove top until the butter starts to go a nut brown. Most of my uh, fish I finish off with a squeeze of lemon. For this dish, uh, three snails is plenty. So just a few other flavours to add to it. Chopped shallot, 
half a tablespoon of chopped shallot, half a clove of garlic. Now that's the, the shallot and garlic, follow that with the snails, okay? This is uh, basically our, our base chicken juice, chicken jus sauce stock. Put tablespoons in there to glaze. A little turn of pepper. Chopped parsley. The cooking, the morels. For this dish, I'm also going to create the sauce, the stock. So I have here butter emulsion. Same stock sauce that I've glazed my snails with. It's onto the stove. Small pinch of salt. Don't over season. Just to finish the, the morels, I have some freshly potted peas and fevs here. Drop them in while they're warming up. Fish on. Snails. They just get coated in some crispy panko breadcrumbs. It has a great texture. I just basically a spoon of the morels, the peas, the fevs, the jus. So turbot takes very well to meaty flavours. You know, you can go hold a red wine sauce, meat-based. This is, uh, originates from Lille, which is in the, the northeast of France. Treat it like Parmesan. There's a couple of thin shavings. Just quickly laid under the hot heat lamps. This is um, roast turbot from Scrabster in the north of Scotland with uh, snails from Devon. The Zhu, the sauce is made with uh, new season morels, some fresh peas and fevs, and then the dish is finished with some shaved mimolette cheese.